That's all that matters. That my life belongs to you. So, even as we go out throughout this conference, make a covenant with God. That God, all that I am, all that I have, all that you've made me to be, made count for eternity. Make a covenant with God. Forget about everybody else. Everybody else is mere flesh. Everything else, because everything else will pass away. And just focus on Him and His words. For it is His word that is eternal. It is His word that never returns to Him void. Somebody say it all belongs to you, Jesus. Tell him one more time. It all belongs to you. One more time, let's just tell him. Everything I have. Everything I have. Somebody tell him. He wants to hear your voice this morning.
just tell him one more time it all belongs to you I can't hear you church Jesus wants to hear your voice this morning say it all belongs to you one more time it all belongs to you it all belongs to you just give it give it to him and see what he will do with it Rejoice greatly. This is Zechariah the prophet. O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. He is lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. That's Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Mark 11, from verse 1 to 10. enjoyed a wonderful time, Pastor Mdavan, in your ladies' conference. Yeah. Your woman did you proud. You were not there, but we were there to see it. <laughs> it was a wow. We had a wow experience together. Thank you so much for allowing me to come minister at your church. Mark 11, verse 1 to 10. Now, about uh, men of God like him. I continue to thank God for men of God like Apostle Chiruseri, Mdavanus, and many other pastors that have broken the seal and have allowed us in this nation to be ministers of the gospel, regardless of our gender. They've allowed us to find ourselves in Christ and have allowed us to be able ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We really want to appreciate you and say thank you. Thank you, man of God. Thank you. I was just giving everybody t time to find Zechariah and everybody to then move from Zechariah to Mark. Can I read Mark now? Everybody there, if you're there, please wave at me. Thank you. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and he said to them, go into the village. Somebody say go. There's five key words that I want to pick from that passage. The first one is go. Jesus said go into the village opposite you and as soon as you have entered it, you will find, somebody say find, you find a colt tied on which no one has set. Just take note of that. No one has set on this colt. No one has found it useful. Loose it. Somebody say, loose it. And bring it. That's the fourth term. Bring it. Somebody say, bring it. All that we are doing 
we do so we can bring it to who? To Jesus. And if anyone says to you, which people are going to say, there will always be somebody talking somewhere. Why are you doing this? Say. That's the fifth term. Say. Somebody say, say. The Lord has need of it. And immediately, he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door. Somebody say door. Remember, this is a, a season where the man of God has declared that the Lord saith, there is an open door. Come up here. But now this poor colt was found called was found tied to the door. When a door is open, you're meant to go through it and not to be tied to it. And this is the, what I'm talking about today. That you and I, I assume we are in Christ. I assume, assume we are in the Lord. I assume we are born again. We come to the Lord and but we come with issues into the kingdom and some of those issues if they're not dealt with they keep us bound they keep us tied so that even if everybody else is going through these open doors you see the door the door is open you hear the invitation come up here but you're tied to the door and today, God would say, loose it and bring it to Jesus so that it too can be free to serve as it was meant to do from the foundations of the world. So, as we talk about this donkey, I want somebody to to be like me to apologize to this donkey because I'm one of those people that have always said oh you know the triumphant entry stop rejoicing because they're not clapping for you they are clapping for Jesus because Jesus was riding on the donkey as he went into Jerusalem but revelation hit me that this donkey had every right to rejoice. It had every right to be thankful because this donkey had a story. This donkey had a past. This donkey had had issues. And this donkey, as we read it, could be you, could be me, or could predict or depict my life. Or your life. So as we read on, let's see it in that perspective. Verse 4. So they went their way, as they were told. They found the cult, as Jesus had predicted. But the do donkey was tied by the door outside the street. And they loosed it like the master had commanded. But just as Jesus had prophesied, some of those who stood there said to them, what are you doing? What are you doing losing this cult? You see, this is what happens. We are told in verse 2 that no one had sat on this cult, that no one had found any use of it, that everybody considered, you, considered it useless, that nobody saw any value in it. If anything, the only thing that was ever talked about when it came to this donkey was all sorts of, all sorts of explanations, all sorts of reasons. Oh, it's probably tight there because, you know, it must have... Uh, 
it must have disobeyed it must have been naughty or maybe it is cursed or maybe um, all sorts of reasons you see but nobody really cared about it until Christ came along to lose it and oftentimes you find it's the same with our lives nobody really seems to care or to notice you or to say anything about you until you come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and until Jesus starts to do a work in you then oh my it's like all hell breaks loose suddenly you are the center of attraction suddenly they are now interested in you oh why is she going to that church oh what is this and what suddenly you have found the light and suddenly there's so much controversy around your life even from people that you never expected even from the very closest of your kinsmen persecution starts to come misunderstandings start to break out maybe jobs start to leave you <laughs> maybe even money starts to flee confusion suddenly breaks out around you but all along nobody ever noticed you if anything they were happy for you to be there just going around in circles going nowhere when you were nobody going nowhere they were happy for you but when Christ sent a word and said go find that donkey loose it bring it to me that it may serve me suddenly there was talk there was controversy you see whatever Jesus Christ wants to use you will find the enemy's tactic throughout as you read the word is always to bring controversy around those issues those things that are most powerful tools that the kingdom of God wants to use to extend the glory and the honor of our Lord Jesus Christ controversy breaks out around those things could be you your life but it could also be issues of giving suddenly giving becomes such an issue wherever there's controversy somebody needs to look around and have their eyes of understanding opened to realize that ha 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 you've hit the nail on the head there's so much controversy have you noticed around giving there's so much controversy have you noticed around the Holy Spirit there's so much controversy have you noticed around women and, um, and and women ministry there's so much controversy even around children family and whether I should force my children to come to church or whether you know I mean as for us we said you know as long as these ones came from the Lord <laughs> they belong to God they don't belong to us who am I to keep them if I force my child to eat breakfast I force them to make their bed why can't I force them to come into the presence of the Lord into the house of God so as long as their chiroseries they come to church from a young age from when they were born on the seventh or eighth the very first Sunday they were in church all four of our children I don't keep them away they're not mine I'm just a steward but there'll be controversy oh no 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 you know my family comes first no I'm sorry my God comes first because my family came from God and it is God who is able to keep them I'm not able to keep them right now I don't know where they are but God knows where they are I cannot convict them but my God can convict them controversy around those things which God wants to use as weapons of warfare for his kingdom so they start to speak and say what are you doing losing this cult but listen Jesus Christ had already warned them just like he prophesied that if you go into the city you will find this cult <laughs> you must untie it you must lose it and then you must bring it to me but there'll be people but you must say this to them so the whole story was foretold from the foundations of the world even from Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 this donkey <laughs> existence was known the prophet Zechariah prophesied yes generations ago about the life of this donkey and it came to fruition 
it came to pass. What more your life? When he says, I knew you from before you were formed in your mother's womb. And I ordained you a priest and a prophet. I mean, God knew when he ordained me that I am a woman. Hello, somebody. He did not make a mistake. When he calls you and he anoints you, it's too late for the controversy because God did it from the foundations of the world. And they may say to you, but look at your background. You are poor. You are a nobody. You are a non-entity. And Christ says, but that's just the right type of material that I use. The forgotten ones the despised ones, the ones that have looked like they are going nowhere, the ones that everybody has talked about in the village, for they are not going anywhere. That is who I want to use. When I read the story, there must have been so many other donkeys. There must have been so many other donkeys in Jerusalem. But when the finger of God points at you. He says that one. He will be very specific. He will hand pick you. <laughs> Process you. He will send people to you. He will say go to that one. Find that one. Untie that one. It is not a mistake that you are here. From the foundations of the world God knew you would be here and that this is your time. It's your turn. You've seen others blessed. You've seen others untied. You've seen others loosed. You've seen others used mightily for the kingdom of God. And you've said, God, what about me? I'm sure this donkey just used to stay there tied and see others pass. You know, you see Jane pass. Would see Mary get married. Would see... Martha would see, I don't know what the names of those donkeys were, but would see others go on their way and, and seemingly have it all together. But he was tied. <laughs> they saw others got married. They saw others start their businesses. They saw others get jobs. The UN raised from the dust caused to sit with kings i thoroughly enjoyed brother waxing uh, please stand up this is brother waxing great <laughs> oh no no this one is cash money from south africa he was telling us the story when we're in south africa he's one of our elders in south africa he says you know when we were starting the church in kadoma i was living in this one room lodging in this one room where at night I would have to chase away rats that would be eating at my, was it your ears or your toes or, 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 or whatever and today please stand I want somebody to know that what God could do for this young man God can do for you too that it's your turn it's your time all you need to do is just to obey to cooperate Today, he's one of the top officials in the UN there. And he says, look at me. I'm smart like this, not because of the UN. I'm smart like this because of the one who knew me from the foundations of the earth. But I just cooperated with him. He's the young man that helped Pastor Mushure start that work, establish that work. Diligent. He never stopped to work for God. <laughs> witness door to door disciple those people because that is the mandate of every Christian to go to find to lose and to bring to Jesus in a nutshell that is the mandate Christ did not save us so that when it is well with me and my husband and my family and my children and my car and my house and my carpets and my rugs and my flowers and my cats and my dogs, it becomes all about me. 
That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not all about you. It's all about him. That is the mandate from the scriptures. Go. Find. Untie. That's the reason. The spirit of God comes and unties us. That's the reason the word of God comes, cleanses us, purifies us, purges us, so that we can consecrate our lives for his glory, for his service, consecrate our children, consecrate our cars, consecrate our homes, our houses, everything. That's why I was delighted when I walked in and I found them singing. What consists my message? It all belongs to him. After we've done all that, we must bring it to Jesus, not to ourselves. There's some people that bring Christians to themselves. Then you have your own pocket. They belong to him. People belong to God. Bring it to Jesus for him to use it, not for you. And so, they spoke among themselves, verse 6. Just as the Lord Jesus had commanded, I'm saying to somebody, just as the Lord Jesus had prophesied, and just like he has prophesied on your life, he has said, this year there is an open door. <laughs> and he has said, come up here. His word never returns to him void. And so, they let them go. And I'd like to believe they said exactly what Jesus Christ told them to say. It's important to repeat exactly what Jesus Christ tells you. In other words, to speak the word into your situation. When you meet the hardships of life, the challenges of life. Know that what will set you free is the truth that you know. It's the truth that you read. Not taking this Bible and putting it under your pillow, but reading it, meditating on it, believing it, working it, and it will work for you. Speaking it. Speak only the word. And the word that Jesus told them to speak is what caused them to let it go. Verse 7. Then they brought the colt to Jesus. And listen to this. And they threw their clothes on it. And he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. The triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem was on a cult. Note that this was predicted some 400 years before this event. Zechariah, the prophet, saw this whole event. And so, Note that a prophetic word rests on your life. I don't know, it may not have been said 400 years ago. It may have been said on the 31st of January. It may have been spoken, I don't know when God spoke to you, but a prophetic word rests on your life. And the prophetic word comes to untie, to loose you, to let you free, so that you are free to become a servant of the Most High God. This is not your destiny. Where your parents put you is not your destiny. Where the owners of this donkey put this donkey <laughs> was not its destiny. 
What your husband has said about you or done to you for that matter is not your destiny. The pain, the rejection, the pain of betrayal, that is not your destiny. Jesus said, untie him, loose him, and bring him to me. And this is what Jesus is still saying today to you. Loose him, untie him, bring him to me. Today, it's your turn. Today, you too will be free from that low self-esteem that has hindered you from serving God most high. Because from when you were growing up, your mother told you, you are useless, you are a nobody. Look at your sister. Can't you see she's prettier than you? Can't you see she works harder than you? They used to say that to me. I grew up believing I couldn't do anything. I grew up believing I was lazy because I wasn't as diligent, maybe. And so, my aunties, when my mom was overseas, my auntie took care of us for over two years. And this time we'd go kumusha to my grandmother. You know, we would, uh, those were the words I would hear. Ah, leli li vila, leli veli. Am chenini leli li vila. You know, I got those labels. So I never thought I could do anything. I thought I was a lazy person. <laughs> they would, we would go to, to, to the village, Kumusha, and they would, would be with all our cousins. We would work, wake up in the morning, go to the field, and each one would be given their own. That's why I understand Christianity. That's why I understand what it is. I learned it from my years of torment, of suffering when I was a child. So each one would be given a little whore of theirs, and you'd be told, this one is yours up to there. And that's exactly the same thing in the house of God. And so it would be with all my little cousins that were obviously experienced in these things. And then, you know, we'd say, right, let's go. So we would start. Ah, you start, you know, very enthusiastically, you know, but you're a town girl. You know, you, 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 you are a salala. But you try your best, you know, so that you're not deemed proud. And I would try my best. And by the time I look up, everybody is there. And I'm still, and I was putting my everything. I mean, I want, needless to say what happens when we then go kumusha with the inkonga. I mean, by the time I get to the house, mine will be half. You know how you'll be trying to balance it and half the water spills out. So, you know, all those experiences bring a dent subconsciously in your mind. That dent your confidence about what you're capable of doing. Because somebody will be saying it. Oh, this one is lazy. Oh, this one is ugly. This one is dull. This one, that. And I believe this was this donkey's experience. So for many years or months, I don't know how long this donkey, the Bible doesn't tell us how long this donkey had been there for. But all I know is that it was going nowhere. You are going nowhere when you are tied to the same place. Until Jesus Christ came along. Until this donkey had an encounter with the Most High God. Until this donkey had a divine encounter. <laughs> With the one who created it. The one who knew even about its existence 400 years ago. Jesus Christ knew about your existence from before you were formed in your mother's womb. So your circumstances are not the ones that will determine your destiny. Jesus is the one who says, For I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans for good and not for evil. Not for you to continue going around the same place. You've been around this mountain for too long. Today is your day for you to be untied, to be free. Free. Free to be the servant of the Most High God. Today, it's your turn. Let me tell you something, somebody. Life is not a rehearsal. When you hear the word of God, <laughs> Know that in life you'll be remembered for one of two things. Either the problems you caused or the problems you solve. Life is not a rehearsal. You're on stage right away. So when you hear the word, <laughs> cooperate with the word. This donkey, she could have said, you know what? This is my life. This is, you don't know what has happened to me. You have no idea what they have done to me. You have no idea what I have gone through. You have no idea the abuse. 
you don't know the pain that I'm feeling, please, sh this donkey could have refused to cooperate with the servants of the Most High God. But all I know, praise God, she was a donkey. I guess she didn't have much choice. No, but other donkeys spoke before. But she decided, no, no, this is not the time to speak. So all I know is that she cooperated. She cooperated. And when you cooperate with whatever God speaks into your life, your life will never be the same again. It's just, it's just a decision away. It's a decision away. When you have an encounter with the Most High God, with the Word of God, because God and His Word are one. When He sends His Word, He sends His Word to untie you, to loose you. And you need to say, yes, Lord. When you say, yes, Lord, that's all it takes. He does the rest. He does the rest. Don't worry about what so-and-so will then say or what so-and-so will think. Leave that to Jesus. You just do your best and He will do the rest. So, this donkey, I was saying at the beginning of my message, I had every reason to apologize to it. Because suddenly, from being a nobody, from being a non-entity, from being that one that was the talk of the village, <laughs> who had children out of wedlock, whose husband left her, who was divorced or who's widowed or whose husband beat her or whose husband doesn't love her or whose wife cheated on, on him or who lost his job or whose boss told him that you can never amount to anything butted him out of a job from being There. I apologize to this donkey I realized she had every reason to rejoice and to be thankful because she had a story she had a past and then she had an encounter with a living God a savior, a redeemer so now she too had a testimony when you have a testimony no one can take it away from you no one can steal that joy from you. No one. And you too, today, it's your turn. It's your turn for your testimony. It's your turn for your turnaround. It's your turn for your freedom. You were not destined to go around the same mountain. You've been going around this mountain for too long. Poverty will not be your portion. So she had every reason to also enjoy the parade into Jerusalem. So, because she was free at last. Thank you for joining us online. We trust and pray you've been blessed by the service. Please continue to stay connected with us on all our social media platforms, on Facebook, on YouTube, and WhatsApp. If you need prayer, please call or send a message to the number on your screen below.